Today, one of the paramedics convicted of Elijah McLean's death is set to be sentenced. McLean died in 2019 after Aurora police confronted and then restrained him and paramedics injected him with a sedative. That was after a 911 caller had reported that he seemed, quote, scratchy, but McLean was breaking no laws. Nine News investigative reporter Kevin Vaughn has been covering this trial from the beginning. Joining us now from the Adams County Courthouse, this is a very important afternoon, Kevin. It is, Anusha. Peter Chikuniak was convicted of the most serious charges in Elijah McLean's death. He was the supervisor who approved giving ketamine to McLean. Medical experts blamed his death on that drug. A jury found Chikuniak guilty of second degree assault and criminally negligent homicide. And while he's eligible for parole, he could also be sent to prison for as much as 16 years. Sentencing scheduled to start at 1.30. We should note that former Aurora police officer Randy Rodima was sentenced to 14 months in jail after being convicted of lesser charges. And there's also another paramedic, Jeremy Cooper, who's still awaiting sentencing. That's scheduled April 26th. Anusha? All right, we appreciate it, and we'll be keeping a close tabs on what happens. Thanks so much, Kevin. Want to give you a live look outside right now. We've got these gorgeous blue skies. The sun is out. It's in the high 50s, but we are also unfortunately watching for some fire danger. We have meteorologist Keely Chalmers here. We were just talking about today into tomorrow. We're going to be watching for red flag warnings, the wind, all, the, all of it. Yeah, we're getting the southwesterly wind, downsloping wind, which makes for a beautiful day. Lots of sunshine out there, but yes, those winds are going to pick up this afternoon and tomorrow. So expect a very breezy afternoon and a downright windy day tomorrow. Out there right now, it is gorgeous. We're at 62 degrees. We've got blue skies. It looks beautiful out there. The wind's out of the west southwest right around 11 miles per hour. Temperatures across the state just mild across the board. We're in the uh, 60s, low 70s across the Eastern Plains Front Range. We're looking at mainly 40s up there in the high country, 58 out in Grand Junction. So those wind gusts already uh, starting to pick up. We're looking at 20 plus wind gusts across the plains. We're looking at 30 plus wind gusts up there in the high country. Those will intensify as we head into the afternoon and certainly tomorrow. We're looking at 50 miles per hour wind gusts down to the south of us along I-25 by tomorrow morning. Take a look at our HD Doppler radar again in between systems, but we are keeping our eye on this one up here that is going to bring us some snow starting as mountain snow, snow to the mountains starting Saturday evening and even a little bit of snow down here in the metro area on Sunday morning. So here is a look at your forecast for today. Boy, we are going to warm up nicely. 65 your forecast high, but again, expect breezy conditions. We'll break down the timeline of that snow coming up in just a bit in your full forecast. All right, we really appreciate it. And speaking of all of the red flag warnings that Keely was just talking about, different agencies are also sharing those warnings, really hoping people are going to help them out this weekend. This is a live look out over Horse Tooth Reservoir. Jefferson County is one of the areas that they're sharing their rules when it comes to open flame limitations are also asking people and visitors to help protect them from wildland fires and encouraging you to sign up for lookout alert emergency notifications, especially this weekend if you have not already done so. Also in Jefferson County right now, investigators have just started their work after a person died in an overnight shooting with deputies. The sheriff's office tells us that the man they shot had a warrant out for attempted murder. All of this started around 11 o'clock last night when deputies found a disabled car in the northbound lanes of Kipling near the I-70 interchange. When they pulled up, they realized that the plates had, were expired and they ended up calling for backup. When backup arrived, the man and woman in the car got out and then started walking around. The sheriff's office says both were ignoring commands to get back into the car, and then deputies say the man opened fire. Deputies fired back, hitting the man. He was taken to the hospital where he died. Investigators are also talking to the woman. They told us she was not hurt. Right now, a neighborhood in Commerce City is very much on high alert after someone opened fire down a street. Police say several people living off Primaria Street just west of Highway 2 heard a series of gunshots just after 9 o'clock Wednesday night. One of those homeowners told officers a bullet came through her wall and into the room that she and her daughter were sitting in. Officers also found at least two cars that had been shot, one with a few shattered windows, the other with a bullet hole in the bumper. Anyone with surveillance video of the shooting or if you saw anything to please call police. 
We do have some new details this afternoon about the man killed in a fireworks explosion this week. Aurora police identified him earlier this morning. He was 42 year old Christopher Paul Cade from Strasburg. He died at a dog park in Aurora. Neighbors have a lot of questions right now because they say they've been hearing overnight explosion for weeks. Julia Thomas is one of those people and she says she turned to neighborhood apps to try to figure out what was going on. Lots of notifications on next door on ring 15 to 20 notifications in a matter of seconds. And what were they saying? Uh, loud. Did anybody hear this boom? Um, does anybody know what's going on? And you know that ranged all the way from the Air Force Base all the way to where the park is to close to where Cherry Creek is. So it's a wide area. Aurora police have not confirmed whether the earlier reports of explosions are related to what happened yesterday. They are looking into them as a part of their investigation. They're also looking into if the fireworks that killed Cade were homemade or bought out of state. This morning, there was a funeral for Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny. Thousands of people divide, defied heavy security to greet Navalny's coffin and then accused the Kremlin of trying to derail that event. Navalny died last month in prison. His wife thanked him for 26 years of absolute happiness. She also pointed her finger at Putin for his death, which the Kremlin is denying. Well, today we're learning about a major change in COVID protocols. The CDC is now saying people who test positive for COVID no longer need to isolate for five days. The new guidance matches public health advice for flu and other viruses. Of course, that includes staying home when you're sick, but going back to school and work when you feel better and have been without a fever for 24 hours. The CDC said in 2021, COVID was the third leading cause of death in the U.S. Last year, it was the 10th, and many doctors have been urging this CDC to lift these isolation guidances for months now. There is continued significant fallout right now after a ransomware attack on the country's largest health care payment processor. The American Hospital Association is now calling this the most serious incident of its kind leveled against a U.S. healthcare organization. The attack crippled Change Healthcare. It's used widely to manage customer payments and your insurance claims. Change Healthcare is a part of Optum and owned by United Health Group. The ramifications of this attack are still being felt throughout the entire healthcare system. With little time to spare, the Senate passed a stopgap spending bill to extend the shutdown deadline just hours after it was passed in the House. Parts of the government were set to run out of money later today. Now, this is, of course, not a permanent fix. It extends funding deadlines for half of the dozen must-pass spending bills by one week. We're talking about funding departments like agriculture, commerce, energy, justice, transportation. And then the deadlines for the remaining six bills have been pushed back by two weeks. That bill is now heading to the president to be signed into law. NBC News saying that he is expected to sign in. We are heading to Mary Jane Winter Park to catch one of the largest ski and snowboarding fundraising events in Colorado. And today was a day for state lawmakers to learn more about wildlife conservation efforts in Colorado.